Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora Forex. Uh, where we were left off last time, uh, the ice sheet of the moon had just melted, causing a slight change in albedo. And um, we're continuing to work on that to get the temperature up and get the oxygen concentration down so we can get some proper people on there. So we'll let that uh, spin for a bit. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is, because there's no minerals, and Luna is a pretty big colony, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can get some extra minerals on here. So um, we're going to do a geological team survey. So geological team surveys are um, essentially a re-roll of resource generation. So when the system is generated, um, everybody will get its resources um, generation rolled. Um, small bodies like asteroids and comets usually end up with a um, low quantity, but a very high accessibility. Be, uh, and it makes sense because they're very small bodies, so there's not going to be much there. Um, but at the same time, it's got very small bodies, so it's very easy to get to those materials. Like, you only have to dig through, you know, 10, 20 kilometers of rock as opposed to the 10, 20,000 kilometers of rock on a full size planet, you know. Um, uh, lore wise, these minerals are mainly found in the cores of planets. Um, not much is in the crust, so you need kind of core mining to get there. So obviously for a planet that's 40,000 kilometers across, you have to dig almost 20,000 kilometers down. Asteroids, much less. So um, planets are generated, and when you do an orbital survey, um, you find all these minerals. So um, once you've done an orbital survey, you can also do a ground survey. Now, what a ground survey does is it re-rolls the exact same generation uh, process of um, all the minerals, except I believe it's a quarter of the normal rate. So, where there would normally be where there would normally be, say, a forty percent chance that um, a mineral will appear, um, you will only get like ten percent chance that a mineral will appear. So it's a much reduced chance that a mineral will appear, um, but still a possibility. Now, um, and, what will hap and what will happen is that um, if a quantity, if a mineral does appear, it'll roll quantity and accessibility. If the quantity and or, or the accessibility is higher than what's already there, then that quantity will go up to the new level or the accessibility will go up to the new level. So if you already have, say, 100,000 macassium, right, and it rolls and you and it rolls with 50,000 macassium, um, then it will stay at 100,000 macassium. Whereas if you have zero macassium and it rolls 50,000 macassium, then it will bump that up to 50,000. Um, obviously, it'll do the same with accessibility, but... Um, that's neither here nor there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll dump a geology team. Now, this is universal. And you can't put this population only, but it kind of doesn't really work because the uh, the pool of officers is kind of in nowhere. So it's, it's kind of in a limbo state. Um, so, yeah, you can generate them. You have the same pool no matter where you go. It's not actually linked to anything. But, um, yeah, if you go to geology and you hit unassigned only, I always hit unassigned only because that one won't access to grab your scientists. Because you see, you have scientists here, right? But if they're working on something, you might actually yank them off your um, research projects. So, unassigned, and we'll go one, two, um, we'll keep this guy three, four, five. So teams are made of five people. So we'll create the team and we'll actually put them on Luna instead of Mars. There we go. Um, and each team will have a rating, which is essentially a kind of combined value of all of theirs. Um, and that for geology teams, that rating determines how quickly they will survey the body thereon. So 
that will do. So we'll let we'll let that spin for a bit, and we will continue on. Okay, got the freighter out. Okay, new jump point. Okay, we'll get another Melbourne class. Uh, how much, do we have any engines? How many engines have we got? We've got plenty of lasers. I think we're actually out of engines. Yeah, we're out of engines. Um, yeah, why not? Only one at the moment, though, because it's going to take it a bit over a year to build. Anyway, we'll move along. Once we get some construction finished, then we'll um, then we'll shift it to building some engines for us. Oh, what am I saying? We've got new we've got new engine tech coming. We're not going to build any new engines. Oh, I think they might have done, found something. Um, no, but their rating has gone up. So officers will train their skills, right? So whatever skills they normally they use, they will train it. So uh, if you have a look up here, uh, this guy raised his fleet initiative move rating. Um, and that's gone up because he's in charge. Um, just I'm going to have a look to see if we've got any survey increases from the surveying that we've been doing. I don't know. But yeah, um, I've seen it before, just don't have one, um, have an example. But, uh, yeah, scientists will gain, will gain research or, um, Administration rating, uh, captains who are doing surveys will gain survey uh, bonuses. Um, planetary governors will gain things based on what pl their planets are doing. Um, they'll gain random want stuff as well that's not related, but they will, um, they're more likely to, they should be more likely to gain stuff that they're actually working in. So these guys, obviously, because they're surveying, they've increased their um, survey rating. Um, further and that has obviously bumped up their total geology team rating as well so we'll let them keep working here's the back of the five okay we've got a research lab free we'll put it into sensors and fire control Keep moving. All right, Canberra Five is wrapping up. Switch it to Grav. All right, we've got improved geo sensors, and now we're working on improved grav sensors. Something about that doesn't sound right. Hmm. I must have think of something else. Oh well. Um, how far off do we have the new engine tech? Uh, yeah, we're still a year out. Oh, quite close, about yeah, a bit over a year. No, a bit under a year. About three quarters of a year. Uh, we got more mining complexes, new jump point. Oh, hold on. That's 
Oh no, we just came from Hobart. Okay. Okay, we've got some more brigade headquarters, so we'll deal with them in a little bit later. New colony ship. Okay, audience factory production is done. All right, so next we're waiting on maintenance facilities to be finished, which will be, I think, around the same time that we're going to be making our engines too. All right, Brisbane has been finished serving. Uh, we'll just move Wollongong a bit. Tuck in Melbourne and Hobart because they really don't need to be that close to anything. Okay. So what finished Hobart, wasn't it? No, Brisbane. So, Brisbane has two jump points. Um, I don't think we're going to explore through there at the moment, um, mainly because anything going through Brisbane is going to have to pass through two completely empty systems. Um, and that's just a hassle because refueling is going to be a pain. Um, and then you have to have to jump through two systems to go do any further for exploration. And then if we find anything, our combat fleets are going to have to go through and yeah that's just going to be a hassle so we'll bring it back and we might Newcastle's another one we want to colonize so what I might do is I might actually bounce it uh, send it home and then bounce it through yeah we'll bounce it through Perth so TG2 Transit back to Seoul. Refuel, resupply, overhaul. Whoops. All right. Put that back. Um. Okay, put that back there. Um, we'll delete this group. Okay, so Adelaide, Seoul, refuel, resupply, overhaul, and no default is what we wanted. Okay, so that will take us home. So we've got 67% fuel. That's still fine because these things have incredible range, but um, it's starting to get a little bit low and I don't want to run the risk of getting them stranded, especially because he has to jump through multiple jump points to get where he's going to survey. Um, maintenance clock is up at two years, that's about half, so um, that's not too bad. And crew is at half as well, so that's not too bad, but we'll let them run um, and get some shore leave. Okay, missile reload rate. So, all right, we're halfway through. Um, I need to take a quick break. Uh, so I'm going to split the video. Be back a sec. Boom. So quick, I didn't even notice. Okay, so we got the reload rate. Let's see what else we can find. Um, missiles, missiles, missiles. 
I want reload rate four. Actually, how's the launcher looking right now? So we're going to want to size six. Oh no, we definitely need faster reload. At three, we we don't even get the size ones down to ten second down below uh, ten seconds. Size six, sixty seconds. Yeah, we need four. Okay. Um, and we also want. Yeah, keep working towards box launches. Okay, we're gonna get shipyard operations soon, which is a bit late, but fine nonetheless. Okay, we got some another survey increase. There it is, and working on civilian economy. And we've got a new lab, excellent. We'll put it into missiles. Probably should get back to working on our um, energy weapons as well a little bit. Um, get the, continue working on those, but we'll... Um, Hold off on those because the lasers we've got are fairly good, nonetheless. Okay, it's paused because of construction, civilian construction. We can ignore that. Uh, we are, looks like we're in 2051 now, so things should not be too far off. Okay, how are we doing on things? Again, the plasma attack is a month away. Brilliant. Okay, we found a new jump point in Wollongong. Shore leave is complete, but we're waiting for the overhaul to finish. And there is Magneto Drives. So what we're going to do is we're going to des quickly design our standard engines. So that will be our civilian engine. There we go. And our standard military engine. Hang on, what, what, what military engine have we got right now? We have a 900 EP ion drive running at 82.6. So we can, if we get the same consumption, we can get a 1200 EP magneto drive. Alternatively, we can go up to two times, but that's a substantially amount, a substantial extra amount of fuel for. Um, and not substantial amount of power. So what I might do is I might drop it a little bit further down and run it at um, 
1200 is such a nice number. Now we're running at 1080 AP at the moment. So that will increase a fuel economy by an additional 20%. Um, and it will still get an increase of 180 engine power uh, per engine, which is not much, but we're already getting good speeds anyway. So fuel economy is going to be a little bit more important right now than uh, extra power. So there we go. So close that down and let's get our power guy working to create our standard engines. Our military engines are a little more important and faster to tech. And we'll also get the fuel. Actually, what we'll do is we need uh, we'll get capacitor rate first, finish that off. Then we'll get another bit of engine power and jump drive. Engine power is extremely useful for missiles because you really, really need the speed a lot more than you need the fuel. So, yeah, but we'll cover that once we actually get there. Okay, Wollongong is done. Canberra 5. How are you doing? Ooh, you're getting close to maintenance, so we will send you home. Refuel, resupply, overhaul, and clear defaults. Uh, when you send it to overhaul, it's very clear. It's very important to clear defaults because um, while they're in overhaul, they will try for the default orders, and on Earth, they'll probably fail. Uh, to get uh, to assign survey orders, and then they will complain. So, very important to uh, make sure that you remove those for your survey vessels. Obviously, if your um, default orders won't trigger every cycle, uh, and then fail to complete every cycle, um, you don't have to remove them. But for your survey ships, very important to you remove those survey orders. Okay. How are we doing? Maintenance facilities are almost complete. Research for engines is getting there. We'll get we'll get the engine that got finished in October. Small freighter, how are we doing for time? Yeah, we still got a bit. All right, we've got a new lab, we'll put it into yeah, keep working on launchers there. Yeah, uh, there's the maintenance facility finished. Oh yes, look at that. Our geological survey team has finally finished work and it's found a little bit of geranium and a lot of sorium. Wow, look at that. That is wonderful. We've got 40,000 sorium on Earth and so that's starting to run out. And now we have a million sorium at 0.9 accessibility. That is absolutely spectacular. You know what? I'm going to keep this team and I'm going to move them manually to places I want them to go. So I'm going to pick up the team. There they are. Um, your ships don't need anything special to carry teams. Um, they pick them up. The teams are almost completely self-contained. Um, so uh, you don't have to have any um, transportation or anything like that. Uh, and we will drop off team. There we go. And um, now nah, they can stay there.
There we go. Um, Mars hasn't actually had this survey, have they? No. Um, but they've only got a tiny amount of almost worthless uranium, so anything that the survey team does find um, can just stay there. Um, it's a bonus. Uh, how are we doing for trade? Well, the surpluses are electronics, which Earth is also in surplus, and plastics, which Earth is not in surplus. So we are going to have a bit of a plastics trade from Mars to Earth, which is nice. Um, and at the moment, everything else is in shortfall, but that's because the colony is tiny. So um, we will be having a trade, uh, a shipping from Earth to Mars. And see, we do have trade goods being shipped as well. Okay. Let's move along. Uh, we've got a new freighter launched. That's fine. Okay, overhaul complete for the Mark Aronson. Alright, where are you going? Well, I believe we are sending him through Perth. So, Mark Arison, go to Adelaide. And then Perth. And then through here. With geological surveying. We'll do one day until he gets there. Because it's probably not going to take it very long at all. Oh, it looks like we have a job gates. Yes, we do. Um, see these little orange paths? That means that there is a two-way jump connection between the two systems. So we now have our uh, Newcastle system uh, set up and connected to Earth. So do we have a salvager? I think we do have a salvager. Yes, we do. Excellent. It's got 50,000 tons, which is enough to salvage all of them. But what I think I might do is uh, wait for a commercial engine to get finished so we can get some more engine power out of it because right now it'll take it way too long. Um, and I don't have time to tug it around or anything like that. That's just a bit of a hassle. <clears throat> However, what we can do is get our troop transport. We don't have a troop transport. Let's go get it. Mm, we need new engines. Okay, let's just wait for the engines to finish and then we'll do everything else. And then we'll do all the ship stuff. Because they're not that far off. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the military engine. Yeah, survey sensors are done, so now we can get better um, survey ships. Excellent. Alright, we need... We'll get the better tracking bonus. And then we'll get the better tracking speed. There. Come on, engines. Bingo. There we are. All right. Now we go and rework all of our ships. So, Amphion, Salvager class. We will copy him, give him a new name. Actually, Amphion 2. We'll just give him a little bit extra time like that because um, that just makes it easier to remember things. So, we haven't got any new armor. So, we have four commercial drives and we will get four of these. Ew. Don't we have any better salvage modules? No. 
Um, what's salvage like? If we cancel that and put those labs into a better salvage module, yeah, because that will let us shrink the size of the ship down a little bit. So we can still get the thousand tons of salvage, but we don't need the two modules because those those things are huge. So um, we'll hold off on the Amphion 2 just yet. But Birmingham is a tanker, so we'll copy that. And... Engines. Here we go. Uh, I'll just strike off the commercial ion drive and the military ion drive. So that flag is obsolete, um, and because I've got um, show obsolete to take off, uh, it hides them. So, so we're doing nineteen thirty-five, and we have a range of two trillion kilometers. So now doing 2580 with 2 trillion kilometers. Okay. Uh, ceramic composite. Yep, yeah, still same armor. That's fine. And we will obsolete the Birmingham. Because we don't need anything special for it. Alright, Canberra is an exploration ship. So we'll copy that. Uh, we'll actually give it a brand new name. Grimsby. Yes, that is nice. Um, I'll give it a sec second layer of... Hmm. Actually, let's give it a second. Hydrogen say geranium. Yeah, let's give it new armor. There we go. So it's still a bit too small, but that's fine. Um, so we'll grab that. There we go. An extra 666 kilometers a, a second um, at 203 billion kilometers range. Um, so I've picked up an extra 2 billion kilometers range. That is really strange. And we're going substantially faster with a 5.3. Oh, right, of course, it's the same efficiency. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> Um, ceramic composite, yeah, that's the newest we've got. Um, so we've got a hundred tons freed up because of the armor reduction. Do we have a better thermal sensor? No, I don't think we do. That's fine. But if we get the improved gravitational and geological, uh, we'll get a second. That still leaves us four, uh, 300, 400 tons short, which we can put into armor, and we still get the four points of each. Um, we'll actually cheapen it down a little bit by taking five of these fuel storage and replacing it with a large fuel storage. <clears throat> there we go. And... We'll stick the second layer of armor off. This will also help with the nebula. If it runs into a nebula, um, it won't be as limited in speed. Um, do we need anything else? Five million range. Ugh. No, that's just terrible. Mm. Could be enough. No, not with this speed. No, never mind. Um, yeah, that's it. That'll do. Um, so, because we do have spare ton tonnage, uh, we'll do three, which will help it out even further with jump drives. And we're still going substantial speed. Um, we haven't lost any range or anything. Uh, do we actually... Nah, it's fine. 
7550 is fine. <clears throat> All right, so Grimsby, the exploration ship, and uh, yeah, let's leave it as astronomers. Oh, and we can build the Canberra. Well, of course we can build a camera, but the camera is obsolete. Um, so we have a substantial improvement on survey points with four each compared to two and three. We've got the improved armor. We've got the better speed. Yes. This is now officially obsolete in every way. <clears throat> um, I think we're actually out of, uh, yeah, you know what? I'll give, I'll give you a bonus time episode. Hooray. Okay. Um, so that's the Grimsby done. So that's the exploration ship done. Collins construction ship. Uh, he's fine. He doesn't, doesn't do any moving anyway. Uh, tug. Okay, this guy is definitely going to need to be reworked. So, copy design. Um, no, I'm just going to rename this guy Tug. Because that way I know what he does. Alright, so we've got... 6,000 engine power, 8,000 engine power. There we go. A very nice increase and more speed for the tug itself, which is fine. Um, do we need anything else? No. Nope. So this guy can go obsolete. This is. I got no idea what no idea what this is. I must have made it at some point and never did anything with it, so that can go away. <clears throat> Our original Amphion can go obsolete as well. Original Birmingham is already obsolete. Oh, because I haven't hidden them. <clears throat> okay. Melbourne Clark. Okay, so we've got destroyer. Our terraformer has twenty-two commercial engines. So, um, you know, I'll I'll upgrade it once I actually need to upgrade it. There's no point doing it right now. Uh, river. That's one of our destroyers. Sydney. I thought we already have a freighter. 25,000. Oh, this is our tanker. Well, no wonder the range is so, so high. Okay. No. All right. There we go. And so high density geranium will replace it with almost a little bit more than half in ceramic composite. Uh, we will swap out the four. Nah. I don't know why I just removed. Okay. Um, we'll swap out the four engines for the four new ones. Um, do we have improved cargo handling? No, not yet, so those can remain. Yeah, I stripped out the cargo module. So... Um, no, we'll stick with just, a with just a standard one. And... Maybe give it a little bit more fuel. You know what, we'll make it we'll make it cheap. We'll replace it with one with two large fuel tanks. 
Um, yes, that will be fine. Sydney can be obsoleted. We got the tug. All right, so all that's left is our warships. What kind of technology are we working on right now? Okay, we don't have anything new going on with gunships, so let's rework our Melbourne class. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to name it Melbourne 2, because all we're really doing is just stripping out the engines and replacing the new ones. So we have three ion drives. So let's note down what specs we've actually got, and then we can do a comparison. So, so we got 10 to 27 speed, 0.54 main to life. Um, Where is, there it is, 4.9 billion. Okay, so three of these for three of these. How are we doing on speed? Well, it's increased and it's increased and it's decreased. So as expected, uh, and what was interesting though is that we can still get a small speed boost and a massive range boost and a maintenance life boost with just two engines. So, and uh, mainly because the, you know, we're not pushing around an entire engine. So this would actually be a far more efficient destroyer. I think I like this. Um, but that range is just horrible. So, I want to get up to 20. There we go. And of course, now it's a bit too slow. So we'll stick the extra engine on there after all. Um, there we go. So we still got some nice speed. Uh, we still have good maintenance life. We still have, uh, we have now a good amount of range. Um, do you want any extra weaponry? No, but we do want ECM, because we actually have some now. We've got two fire controls. Why do we have two fire controls? Get rid of one. I think, I think it was in there because of redundancy, but um, this will let it run um, auto-fire a little bit better. Uh, we've got ceramic composite, which is best. Four layers, which is honestly a little bit low, but can we get it up higher? Yeah, we'll, we'll have it at six. That's still nice. Um, damage control. There we go. We've got some damage control now as well. Okay, so now how are we doing? We've picked up about... 800 kilometers a second speed. Uh, we've lost a little bit of maintenance life, but it's not bad. There we go. That's a bit better. Um, so we still got, have, got, have good speed. We still have good maintenance life. And we have about four times the range. Wonderful. <clears throat> and better armor, so we're better protected as well. Excellent. So Melbourne 2 is done. We will obsolete it, the original Melbourne. Um, columns of the construction ship. River is our gas ship. So, yes, we want to copy that one. River 2. So, again, Let's look at our fundamental specs. So speed is 8823. 
maintenance life is 1.26, range is 4.3. So let's strip out the three ion drives, replace them with the with three magneto drives. Well, that gets us up to 1062 um, immediately, which is good. We got the latest armor, which is also fine. And we've got twin gas turrets. Now, I'm wondering whether we should do anything with additional turrets. I mean, I could probably... F mm, no, I can't because they're big. Um, what I might do... Let's, let me think for a bit. So, a gas cannon. So, the rotational gear, it's a percentage, but it's based off the size of the total turret. Because 25% of 6 is 1.5. Hmm. No. We'll hold off on a sec. I'll hold off a bit for that. So, that will, um... Yeah, that'll do. But I will add more fuel for it. We'll get it up to 20 billion as well. Oh, no, we can't. Because we need to keep it on the 16,000 tons because that's our jump drive. Okay, well, we did still pick up a substantial amount of speed. And now this thing is uh, capable of... Now, now our entire fleet should be capable of uh, outrunning uh, most fighters, which is awesome. Um, and... Where is our missile ship? Uh, we don't have a missile ship yet, of course. Okay, well, that is the two ships that we do have redesigned to incorporate our new engines. Um, and that's, yeah, that's going to be a bit of an overtime, but that's fine. Uh, happy, to get, happy to make it up for you because I've been a little bit flaky over the last couple of days. Um, I've expecting to start work soon so i've kind of been shifting my sleep cycle into the uh, daytime plus it's been an absolute nightmare to record at night so i'm doing it in the mornings now so i hope you've all enjoyed and i will see you in the next episode